Welcome to the TK Show with the Athletic Bay Area's Editor-in-Chief, Tim Kawakami. Everybody, Tim Kawakami here. TK Show recording from a primetime Warriors practice. A little late night, uh, back from the All-Star break, and we're talking to lead assistant Mike Brown. Great to have you on, Mike. How you doing today? I'm doing great. How was, how was the All-Star break for you? Fantastic. Uh, except uh, I was down in L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son played at, at USC okay. and then at UCLA. They lost at USC yep. in the buzzard and then lost in overtime oh. against UCLA. <laughs> but it was fun for me to be able to watch him and his team play. Yep. So I, I, it was enjoyable. So how many games have you been able to get to see this? Uh, probably about five. It's about no, five. You know, with, with him being right up in Eugene, it's, yep. a, it's an easy flight. Yep. And uh, So I've caught a few games up there. Are you coaching along with it? Are you are you are you going through it in your mind? Or you just, or can you just be a father and let it happen? I, I this one I can be a father and let it happen. I, I mean, I know how hard it is to coach, mm-hmm. so I you know I I don't I don't try to watch any of the X's and O's mm-hmm. type stuff. I I watch him. Yep. And but I've gotten to a point now, Timmy, that that instead of me really talking to him about it after the game during the game, I'll just text text him some things, mm-hmm. and and then if he wants to read the text, and talks about and talk about it after the game, then great. If not. Tell them, hey, good win or good, you know, Wait a tough minute, basketball roster. players look at their cell phones? <laughs> I'm, I was unaware about that. Like like at halftime, maybe? Right. <laughs> halftime, in between quarters? <laughs> right on, yeah, right on there. Right on. During the game, over time, I'm going to take a look at this. Why, why do you think we got all those people sitting behind the bench? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they're cell phone holders. Yeah, yes. Make sure everyone's organized correctly. Hey, uh, but they're back from the break. Uh, I know there was a practice yesterday with, yeah. with the non-All-Star guys. The All-Star guys come in here tonight. Did you see a freshness? Did, did you see kind of what you maybe wanted to see? We didn't, you've been talking about these guys look tired. We, we've all been talking about. Did you? Did they look fresher tonight? Yeah, they they all looked like they were ready to get back to work, and with the understanding that we're basically down to the stretch run now, and so uh, you know we haven't played as well as we'd like to the past month, month and a half, whatever it's been, and and uh, taking a little break, getting away from each other, getting away from the, the daily grind of practice, shooting around, game travel. Uh, and each other was good for us, I felt, and and uh, guys seem to be back, uh, come back in good spirits. Of course, everybody in the Bay Area, so it's crisis time for the Warriors. You're slipped to the number two seed. Uh, how do you feel about the way this team has come to this point? Uh, we've all noted that it's a long run, three long trips to the finals. Uh, do you do you sense that there's a little slippage with this team, and do, do you have have there been steps taken to kind of tighten up a little bit? Uh, yeah, there's been some slippage. Uh, there's been some slippage, like I said, in the last month, month and a half or so. And uh, that's, to me, that's natural. That's normal. Uh, it's it's hard to sustain uh, being at the top for four, five, six, seven years in a row. And I feel like I've been with some good organizations, some good coaches, good GMs, good players. And, you know, and, and you look at the model franchise in San Antonio with that being one of them. And, and uh, they've had some Hall of Fame players go through there, and it was hard for them to sustain. Never won back to back. Yeah, you know, I was there three years. Uh, I was there th- th- three years as an assistant coach, and we won it one year, and the other two, we, you know, one I think one year we got bumped out in the second round. Mm-hmm. Maybe the other year might maybe the semifinals. I'm not sure, but it, it's it's a hard thing to do. And uh, so what this club has done so far has been, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, fantastic. You know, it's it's been. Uh, something that not many people can imagine doing. Uh, it's it's very hard. The league is using you as a model, and so every day they're doing things to combat the type of team you have and the things that you do out there. And and every time we play a team, it's uh, their biggest game of the year. And so even for teams that are, are losing teams, uh, they circle our our date, and you know if they can get a win, and, and in their mind it might help change or turn around their franchise. And so uh, you know where we are right now. I'm more than okay with it. Uh, you know, you, you struggle during during the regular season from time to time, and you find your way to get through it or get past it, and it helps you for times in the playoff when you're going to hit some adversity because you will hit some in, in the playoffs. Uh, except for last year, maybe. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't a lot of adversity. Well, uh, you did have adversity, though. I mean, Steve was out. Steve was out. Yep. Not only was Steve out, uh, KD was out. Yep. And we were starting, a, you know, a rookie and, and Pat mm-hmm. McCaw. So, you know, we, we hit a few roadblocks. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we were down, you know, big against San Antonio. Yeah. And, and obviously, you know, Kawhi getting hurt. 
uh, you know, seemed like it helped us a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, or gave us a better chance to get back in the game. But that's still a quality team. Yeah. That's a playoff team. That's a well-coached team. And to come back from the, the deficit that we did in that game, to come back from the deficit that we did uh, in game three up in Portland, you know, uh, those are some things that maybe if during the course of the season we had it smooth sailing that we might not have figured out how to get through during those times. Do you remember those 11 games that you coached differently than the other games? I mean, is, are, there, are those kind of like highlighted in your mind just because you had so a, a different role for them? I, you know, it, the one game that I I think I will always remember, not necessarily the 11 games, but the just the, the first game that I coached uh, at Portland. And, and uh, you know, we went down, we were down huge. Mm -hmm. And um, and just the, the, the patience that all of our guys had with me, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and vice versa throughout the course of the game uh, nobody panicked you know um, nobody got uh, out of well, nobody got out of the box or anything like that we just kind of stayed the course and I just think back to you know almost every sp time out specifically that we just kind of talked through where we were and it was just a collective you know uh, deal where not just from the players but from all the coaches too and it was a collective thing that uh, we had going on during those timeouts that, you know, gave me, I know, gave me in particular a sense of confidence that, yeah, we might be down, I don't know, 18, 19, whatever it was. But uh, I just felt like if we stayed the course and we continue to uh, chip away like we were doing and keep our head on our shoulders, uh, that we'd win the game. And we did. You were so relaxed throughout. Maybe not when you're down 18, <laughs> but, we, you know, you can tell when a guy's like, wait a minute, what – I'm not sure, but you never gave that vibe off. Was that important to you? Were you trying to give that vibe off, or was it just, hey, I, I feel pretty comfortable with what I'm doing? I, you know, I did feel comfortable with what I was doing, and, and, and again, a lot of it, you go back to, to the foundation that Bob and, and Steve have laid here, uh, but, I mean, TK, the reality of it is that, you know, I've never been at the helm of, of uh, four All-Stars, yeah. <laughs> you know, let alone, I don't, I don't think I've ever coached uh, two perennial All-Stars mm -hmm. at one time. Yeah. And so, you know, when you have uh, a team full of talented players like this that not only obviously are talented uh, but uh, are mature and have a great feel and understanding of how to play the game the right way on both ends of the floor, uh, they help you uh, become relaxed. And, and, and that group needs that more than anything else. They just need a little bit of guidance out there from time to time. Except when you give them the clipboard. And have <laughs> oh, that's the other guy. The other guy did that. The other guy did that. Uh, what did that's you think cool. about that? You know, I mean, you're you're meeting with him, you know, beginning of the timeout, and then Draymond comes up, grabs the clipboard, and what did you, what did you do then? You just kind of stared off into space, or did you listen in on some of those huddles? No, you, you listen in on some of the huddles. Not only that, you, you know, we still talk to, to guys individually, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if we saw something on the floor. Uh, but, you know, I thought it was a great exercise, uh, you know, by Steve. And again, it's one of those things where uh, I think Terry Stotts said it best. He, he you know, apparently uh, after that happened, obviously we, you know, I don't know, a couple of days later, a few days later, we played up in Portland and and uh, I heard uh, during practice he gave the clipboard to <laughs> Damian Lillard yeah. and, and uh, he said, uh, this is about as far as he can go with it. <laughs> <You> <laughs> That's know? right. He's got a different team than yeah. us and, yeah. and he's right. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the team that we have, you can uh, uh, think a little bit out of out of the box and and challenge them in different ways, and and uh, that was definitely, a, a, in my opinion, especially with our team, a, a great way to challenge them. You weren't giving up those rotations, though. I noticed that, <laughs> that you wrote you wrote down the players who were in the game, right? Uh, yeah, we, we helped them with substitutions. <laughs> uh, you know, That's about it, though. Yeah, we, we, you yeah. and I talk about this all. You know, I love watching rotations. I yep. th I'm sure that's how you guys watch the game or or coach the game. Who do we want in? What combinations yeah. work? What what are the maybe the slight alterations that we've seen this season and we've seen maybe the second unit change a little bit? Um, have you have there been a few things that you you can point to? That, okay, we've changed this a little bit. We've tweaked it a little bit here. Uh, not not really. You know, obviously the personnel has changed with our second unit because uh, you know Ian Clark was a mainstay with our, our second group and you know uh, <coughs> Matt was out there uh, from time to time, but. Um, uh, for, for the most part, uh, Timmy, it's uh, it's been relatively the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, th there are times when, you know, last year we it seemed like we always would take uh, uh, KD out, so mm -hmm. we tried to try to yep. try to stagger KD and Steph to 
bring KD back a little bit before Steph in the, in the second quarter. And, and, you know, this year we probably let them both run the, the whole first quarter more than they, they did last year. Uh, that's real subtle. But uh, other than that, it's 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 pretty much been the same. Our, our goal at the end of the day is to try to keep two of our four all, perennial all-stars on the floor at the same time. Yeah. What have you thought? I mean, we talked to Sean about the second unit. He goes, what's our defensive rating? And it, it's obviously tremendous. That second unit is lights out defensively. Offensively, there certainly some, can be some issues. Do you see Nick Young, Patrick McCaw having a, a more of a role that they're not in that unit right now? But uh, can you see more offense coming out of that group? Do you need to see more offense out of that group? You know, any time, obviously, that you, that you can bring more offense to the table, that's, that's a bonus. But uh, the thing about you know, you've been around the league long enough that, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, the offense is not always there, even if you have a great shooter or two within that, that group of five. And so the one thing that can always be there is uh, the defensive intensity, pressure, however you want to call it. And, and that's why a lot of teams, especially a lot of times, especially as of late, we, have had, we haven't gotten off to a good start. But it seems like when we got to our second unit, They've got a nice, they, you know, they get to a nice little run or a nice little rally, get us back into the game, get our guys excited and stuff like that. And it's not necessarily because they're scoring a lot of points, just they're so, they're so long. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, their length and their intelligence and all that other stuff uh, allows us to switch a lot of things. And it's hard to pinpoint uh, for our opponents who they can attack when we do switch mm-hmm. uh, in a mismatch situation. And so now, uh, you know, our opponents are shooting over in length almost every time down the floor and, and getting three, four stops in a row for that group uh, usually gets us out, out in transition. We get an easy basket or it allows us to try to execute in the half court. And although they're not necessarily scoring all the time, if they can get three, four stops in a row and, and maybe get a bucket or two in the half court and, get a run out here or there because they got a nice stop then you know, that's two to three baskets to opponent zero so oh, yeah. that, that 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 intensity defensively is uh in the length and size and all that is is a positive like every david west bucket it counts like two yeah they feel, they feel like four <laughs> point like just, just because there's so little else yes. going on offensively yeah. sometimes and, and we play through him quite a bit yeah. you know, yep. we play through him quite a bit oh, in the david post. west david off, off, david west is a jump shot it's, <laughs> it's 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 almost as valuable to you at maybe you know Parallel to a Steph Curry, uh, uh, Kevin Durant, just because within the context of, of that offense, of the group, yeah, yes, absolutely, that yeah. unit. Uh, you talked about how teams have played against you now for, for several years, and and they're mat- trying to pl- match themselves against you. Right. Do you think Houston is the is is a become an issue for you guys at all? Uh, other than not not a oh you're scared of them, but they right. have one, two, or three this season. They do seem to have players that can bug you you know and, and get into those passing lanes and we know you like them you know certainly like the motion offense do you see Houston as a different kind of challenge this season uh, I I do and and uh, you know they added Chris Paul who I think uh, has helped tremendously and you know a lot of people talk about that but the thing that uh, people don't give enough credit to Houston uh, in my opinion about is is the addition of uh, you know PJ P. Tucker yeah. and and Bamute. Yeah, yeah, Bamute. And uh, those two guys bring length and toughness and a defensive intensity that, uh, you know, in the past, Houston didn't quite have. You know, when you, when you played those guys, you, they obviously had Trevor Ariza. You looked at him as a, as a staunch defender with some length and some athleticism. But then beyond that, especially out on the perimeter, uh, they didn't have the guys that they have now. And so I, I think the addition of those two guys – more than anything else has helped those guys become uh, a contender and uh, they're able to do some things defensively now against us that they weren't able to do before do they make you you know you we know where the entry pass is going to go and they know where the entry pass is going to go do you have to say okay we're gonna have to change some things specifically maybe against that team and against Oklahoma City they they, they just kind of seem to know where the passes are going when you start your offense uh yeah we just have to one thing we can't be as carefree or careless with the basketball because especially against a team like OKC because they have again I'm going to go with length and mm-hmm. athleticism and <clears throat> those guys are very good in the passing lanes and you know our guys you know at times will get careless with the basketball not only will they get careless with the basketball but uh, our guys like to pass mm-hmm. and sometimes 
uh, when you know when you play a motion offense like we do, and that ball is zipping around the perimeter like it is for us, guys take chances, and you can't take chances against those types of teams. Uh, Steve says it all the time. He, you know, he tells our guys to hit singles, mm-hmm. and uh, you know sometimes our guys like to. You hit home runs yes. with <laughs> grand slam <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. when, yeah. when it's not quite there. Mm-hmm. And you know, a team like OKC especially will feed off of that and, and make you pay. Uh, the pick and roll, it's, it's, a, it's a debate. You could just throw Steph and Kevin in a pick and roll or Steph and Draymond in a pick and roll and just keep running and keep running. And, and there are a lot of points to be made from that. Uh, when you were coaching, there was a little more pick and roll, a <laughs> right. little more. I mean, right. do you see this happening naturally in a playoff situation, that the, the pick and roll is going to happen maybe more than you're doing right now, which is just the movement, just the motion? Uh, yes. You know, I think come playoff time, you know, y- y- it's more about, at times, attacking matchups. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, we did we did last year, uh, specifically against Utah, mm-hmm. uh, e- even uh, Portland too, but, but Utah – got late in some games and bringing KD to yeah, the top of the floor know. and playing pick and roll uh, so he can go downhill against Rudy Gobert was something that was pretty effective mm-hmm. and I mean I, I, there were probably stretches where we ran that five six seven eight times in a row yep. you know because it's an advantage for us so uh, I, you know I think uh, come playoff time uh, you know we may see do a little bit more of that but uh, you know right now uh, you know, Steve it really has uh, pressed the, the motion passing game against you know with these guys, and they've picked up on it well, and it's something that's worked for for many years, and and our guys feel comfortable doing it. And uh, yeah, and it's easy, I think, to to pinpoint where you want to go in different situations throughout a course of a seven game series. So. Uh, it would be a little different, I think, from time to time during the playoffs. Safe to say you're maybe kind of trying to get him to do it a little bit more occasionally than he, than he wants to do? Or is that he, once you get the postseason, it's all you, you're doing whatever works? I, yeah, I th- it w- we'll do whatever works. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, he, he knows that uh, if there's an advantage. Clay Thompson, great day of uh, <laughs> Clay Thompson had a, according to Clay Thompson, Clay Thompson. <laughs> uh, Clay Thompson still in Cabo. <laughs> but it's okay. Clay <laughs> uh, didn't disagree. Either. I know. Uh, you know, no, St- Steve understands, and, I, and he did it when he came back last year. Uh, you know, we had a specific action where the double drag where KD was involved with Steph and our big and, you know, against Cleveland. I mean, we went to that thing uh, again four, five, six times in a row because it was something that worked well and it confused Cleveland. And, uh, you know, I think, in, in that environment, you know, S- Steve is more uh, understanding or, or he, he would adjust more in situations where, where we have an advantage and kind of attack a mismatch from time to time. But uh, he's such a purist that he, he really loves the motion game and he's implemented it to uh, a T here with these guys and they p- picked up on it well. So and they're pretty good uh, at it too. Uh, not they're, bad. They're all right. Not they're bad. Decent players. Yes. Uh, you have been a head coach obviously many times. You have going to have offers and th- this is a great situation for you I know but do you still say okay I- I'm going to be a head coach and I'm going to you know there's going to be a right situation out there or are you saying this could be where you are for a while yeah I, you know I'm I'm open to anything the one thing that I do know for sure is uh, I enjoy working for Bob I enjoy working for Steve uh, I feel like I've learned a lot uh, I feel like I've given some too or helped in s- some areas too but uh, uh, <coughs> you know my time here has been fantastic and the Bay Area has been great, and so I, I, I'm looking forward to being here. And if an opportunity comes up, uh, you know, obviously I owe it to myself and my family to to look into it. But uh, by no means am am I in any rush to to try you, to go someplace you're else. You're not the new guy any, <laughs> either, right? <laughs> no, so I, this is yeah. This year there wasn't a a, ma- a change at all, right, on, on the staff. Did, did you feel that continuity that this? They, they've been having some changes every year. Guys, guys are getting head coaching jobs, which is obviously a good thing. Right. Uh, did you feel that this was a little more continuity going into this season? Yes, I did. I know for, for yeah, me. For you, for sure. Yeah. In particular, for yeah. sure, because, uh, you know, last year, you, you, you know, you're trying to coach, you're trying to help out. But while you're doing that, you're also trying to get used to the guys individually, not just the players, but the coaches too, and then the culture, and, and figure out how can you help the team uh, within the framework of what they're with they're trying to do and what they've been doing to have the success that they've had and so uh so I you know I f- feel like I have a better feel or 
uh, I can help out in different situations a little bit better this year than what I did last year. You're the workout guy for Draymond, uh, and you know he has had gone through some different things. He's talked about some different things. Where do you think he is physically? Where do you think he is w with that shot? It's what we really what we see on the court. Uh, do you see it coming open a little bit more f for him? Yeah, you know what, the teams are playing off him, and you know, and they are because of who he's on, out on the floor with. And you know, if he's open, he's got to step up to shoot the basketball. And you know, we have the utmost confidence in him making the shot especially if it's a big shot you know he's done it so many times in the past uh but you know his shoulders been bothering him a little yep. bit this year and and uh so he hasn't had the reps uh this year uh, he hasn't gotten reps this year in, in, in practice and stuff like that post practice that he's had uh that he had gotten last year mm -hmm. and and uh you know it's bothered him from time to time but again uh tim i'm i'm confident that if he's open and he has to take a big shot First of all, he's not afraid to do that. But second of all, I think he'll knock it down for us. One thing you can say, he, he certainly works on it yeah. all the time. Yes. I mean, uh, we talk about, does he, how close is he to getting some kind of a like jump hook, a mid-range little runner? Uh, he has it occasionally, but how how close is he really being able to put that in as a staple of his I, game? You know what, I, I th the, the runner is is something that he's added this year. He's, he's hit that a few times. Mm -hmm. Uh, throughout the course of the year, it's a tough shot. And it's a tough shot, yeah. but he, you know, that's something that he that he has incorporated in his workouts. Mm -hmm. So he gets up uh, a handful of runners on a on a daily basis when he when he gets his workout in. Uh, you know, the, the the jump hook is something that uh, in the summertime he works on. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work on it uh, as much here, and you know, and, and one of the things we talked about doing is putting him in a better position to where if he has a smaller guy on him. Uh, uh, like Joe you know, Dallas put uh, Maria, uh, right? yeah, no, well Yogi Ferrell, yeah, Dennis right, yeah, Smith, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah, on him a couple yeah. of times, and you know we could put him in a better position to where he doesn't have to necessarily go to his jump hook, where you just kind of throw the ball up to him and you know lift the offense in a nutshell and let him go get it, and now it's basically a layup because he's going to out jump those guys. So. You know, Houston does that and, and will do that, right? They put Chris Correct. Paul on him or they put some, you know. Uh, what's the answer there then? Yeah, what is it's to get him moving against a small guy? Uh, you know, try to get him moving into the painted area yeah. versus small guy yeah. and uh, to where he can get deep enough in the paint where that guy feels like he needs to front him. Mm -hmm. You know, now, he needs, now if he fronts him, basically you just throw the ball – up to if the offense is lifted, you know, above mm -hmm. basically above the, the free throw line. Mm -hmm. Now you just throw the ball up uh, to the back of the rim and mm -hmm. have them go get it. And, and now it's, it's a layup instead of a, a back down jump hook where a double team can come or, you know, somebody can fake a double team and make him pick it up when he's trying to back the smaller guy down. Yeah, I mean, Houston's going to do it, I'm pretty yeah. sure, right? I mean, th yeah. that's what they've done and they've gotten they've some success out of it. Correct. Um, yeah, what, what is. What is that like knowing that you have all these teams just studying everything you do and trying to work on? I mean, uh, it's, you're the best team. You want that. But to know everybody's eyeing everything you do strategically. Uh, you know, it, it, first of all, it's, it's an honor. That's part of what, uh, in my opinion, about being here, you, you know, you're, you're learning kind of on the fly because teams are uh, building their teams to compete against you and, uh, not only with their roster, but uh, with their X's and O's on both ends of the floor, and uh, so you learn different ways to counter what you know teams are throwing at you, the new things that teams are throwing at you. So uh, you take it in stride. You keep trying to make adjustments, um, and, and and you go see what happens. Uh, but but this team is, is is so talented and so long that uh, um, you know when when our minds are right and we're playing with a a defensive and intensity that uh, we've had played with in the past quite a bit. I don't care what you throw at us. Yeah, these guys are hard to beat. What's it like to have the old guys, David West, Andre Godala, and Sean Livingston, mean so much to this team at this point? You've got Steph, you've got Clay, you've got Draymond, you've got Kevin, yet those three guys kind of kind of settle it down almost every time. You know, <coughs> it's the, the ironic thing about it is not only those, those are three older veterans, mm -hmm. uh, but the biggest thing is they're three respected older mm -hmm. veterans. Because, uh, you know, there are a lot of teams out there that have quote unquote or older guys or guys been in the league 12, 13 years, but uh, if the respect's not there, 
uh, then you're not going to get much out of them. And, and, and our guys are so well respected in the locker room that um, you know the message doesn't always have to come from from Steve or from one of the assistant coaches. You know, when those guys speak, everybody listens, yeah. and uh, it, it's it's a powerful thing to have when you have the type of vets that we have on our team, uh, like those three guys. And you know, whether it's during a, a, a timeout in the huddle or you know, at halftime in the locker room or during practice or whatever, uh, those guys know what to say. Uh, they seem like they always say the right thing, and, and uh, everybody listens when they do. All right, when everyone listens to Mike Brown, I'm sure we'll definitely listen to this podcast. That I know. <laughs> as long as he subscribed to the right one, not the wrong one, the right TK show on the Athletic. But Mike, as always, great talking to you. We'll break down the rotations again, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, appreciate you coming on. Always good talking to you. Hey, anytime. I appreciate you having me, Tim. All right, everybody, that's the TK show. Thanks.